it's a lot safer. When it rains, bugs come out, especially centipedes. You know, I know many stories of kids who got stung by centipedes. You know, and believe it or not, the small ones hurt big uh, way more than the big ones. You know, I can clean the sidewalk. I can keep it clean. You know, it's just easier to live. You know, when you got no place else to live. I mean, that's why we choose a sidewalk. Last we heard, it was public. You know, grass, dirt, usually owned by private citizens, and it's usually private property. So that's why we're on the sidewalk. You know. There's nights when you're half on, half off, and you get harassed all night. Get off the dirt, get off the grass, go on the sidewalk. Get off the sidewalk, go on the dirt, go on the grass. You know, at three o'clock in the morning, that's, that's, that's crazy. And now, now you guys are gonna come and give us a citation? What's a citation? It's a ticket. It's a ticket that costs money when you go to court. You either pay it in money, in cash, or in community service. And the more of those that you accumulate will turn into jail time. That's just how it is. There's no answer so buts about it. You know, that's the law, you know. So for an officer of the law to sit here and say, oh, we're not sure yet, you know. How do we trust these officers? I mean, with what we see already, we have a hard time trusting anybody, you know especially our government. Thank you for your testimony. Members, <coughs> any questions? Council Member Harimoto. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Martin, would you mind sharing with us how it is you became homeless and why you don't go into a shelter? My tent's cleaner and more comfortable than a shelter. Um, there's a lot of people that don't go and they have their own reasons. We have our own. Uh, we have pets. Uh, they're actually like our family members. We can't part with them, you know. We're going to get off the street soon. It's going to take a little while, you know, maybe four to five more months, but we're getting there. You know, we're doing what we can. Uh, for some reason, we haven't been getting swept, and it's helped us tremendously. You know, we saved more money. You know, we're looking at maybe five more months at the most, maybe six, and we'll be off the streets without the shelters, you know, on our own. <clears throat> but shelters, I don't know, they, they already, I already lost a lot. My dignity, you know, I don't feel much of a man sometimes. And to go in a shelter and I don't, know, I don't know how to explain it, just uh, guys like this one over here <laughs> who will belittle you, you know. I'd rather live out on the sidewalk. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Martin. Jack Tonaki. Sierra Cummings, followed by Levi Landis. Hi. I'm going to start out by saying I'm not homeless. I may be unsheltered, but I'm not homeless. I'm home, you guys. I live on the streets. I fought in the Munich Armed Services. I got a dishonor discharge granted, but. Granted, I got a dishonorable discharge. But I'm still, I still fought in the services. I'm still a veteran. It doesn't matter whether I got what kind of honorable, what dishonorable, honorable, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm still a veteran. I got hundreds of friends out here on the streets in Waikiki. I've lived on the streets in Waikiki for the last four years of my life. Up until about two weeks ago when I moved up to Pro Ridge. You know why I moved to Pro Ridge? Because of the new bills on the fucking blocking the sidewalk. Excuse my French. Sorry. On the, on the blocking the sidewalk. I had to move up to Pearl, Pearl City, where I'm in a wheelchair, and I have to go up and down hills now because of the new sidewalk blocking bills in Waikiki. 
because I can no longer sit with my wheelchair on the sidewalk. The first time I got swept by the police, I was asleep. I had gotten out of my wheelchair and was asleep on the ground. The first time I got swept, what next thing I know, they came and take my walker that I used to go to the bathroom. They came strong-armed my cooler chair that I had next to me from my hands because I had it all packed up. They strong-armed it from me and threw it in the back of their truck and told me that I had to pay $200 to get my walker and my backpack with my medication because you can only carry take one bag, they told us. That, they call that justice? I don't think so. If you can look me in the eye and look every veteran and every man and woman and child that sits on the streets in Waikiki and here in Hawaii and tell them that they are criminals because they can't get a job or because they can't afford housing, then pass this law. Otherwise, let it go. That's all I have to say. Members, any questions for Mr. Landis? Thank you for your testimony. Uh, Jack Tonaki, Sierra Cummings, Michael Tata, followed by Michael Daly. Thank you, Jaya. Oh, you. I've been coming around this little working or doing anything, but I'm against, I'm against the bills. Again, why you keep forgetting? Why you keep forgetting is that these are human beings. He found it. Yeah. See that law. Okay. is inhumane. Why about. Why about. You know. Somebody. Who's going. Who's. Who's. Who's walking along. And the citizen was watching the heaviest stroke of a seizure and the heaviest I've done for a while. But is that good for you? What a fool of a disability who, who get dizzy, who has seizures, who have other types of disabilities. The cousin to need to lie down. Is that a cousin? Oh Why are you using oh this? is story in the bathroom. The restroom. And then, some people can have a hold of themselves. Some people have bad issues. Not the only people with this business. But also people who are elderly, who have kidney problems or a coin problem. You can bring me at home in the night. Until, until you can provide a real housing place. A real housing place. Not only for hundreds of boys, but maybe because until you can buy a healthy bird or other issues, now I won't go to that somewhere like that, but until you can, <laughs> until you can do a, a quiz, until we can buy healthy birds, yeah. You have no business paying the bill. These are human beings who need help. These are human beings who need help. Thank you for your testimony. These are human beings who need help. Thank you. Members, any questions for Mr. Tata? If not, Michael Daly. Before the clock starts, I just wanted to ask you a, a, a 
uh, procedural thing. Th this bill is a rewrite of um, Bill 59, which was last year in October 2013. And that was with the Committee of um, uh, Safety and Economic. Um, th this bill is, a, is, is very similar, but it's in, this, in the Planning and Zoning Committee. How, how did, do you know why uh, the same bill would appear in different committees? Uh, you'd have to pose that question to Council Chair Martin. As the chair of the council, he refers the bills to committees. I see. Just another uh, procedural thing on the matter of the, uh, the minute um, uh, restriction on, on time. I appreciate you allowing us to go over, and um, I, I, I just wanted to say that the reason why I'm so hungry for time is because um, it's such an important issue, but uh, despite the people who have been opposed to this and have spoken so uh, well about it, there are so many issues that are still, um, still not coming up, and I've been to many of your meetings uh, on this same bill, and I have a backlog of really important issues that aren't being addressed. So okay. uh, I appreciate that the, uh, the committee that booked the room has allowed us to go up over. And so okay. thank you. I, thank you. Please offer your testimony. Um, uh, Chair, um, um, one of the things, you know what, I, I'm from Australia and uh, we don't have a homeless problem there, at least we didn't before globalization, and, and the adoption of US culture through corporate globalization. And so um, it's, it shocks me what's happening here, just to be confronted with the epidemic of homelessness, uh, hit me in New York City when I first arrived in the USA in the 80s, uh, but Honolulu and Hawaii is worse. Um, um, People who see someone homeless and in need on the street in Australia, they don't ring the police to say they're blocking the sidewalk. They ring services. They try, they try and find housing. My colleague in Brisbane ha found a house for a homeless person, I think it was a family, within 24 hours. W w when someone is identified as homeless, they're kind of conspicuous there. We don't, we don't just ignore them. They're not invisible. The legal problem. People have spoken about the legal challenge and I, I'm concerned about that if you pass this bill. Did you know one of the things that has been on my backlog is that this bill not only restricts um, sitting and lying on the public sidewalk, but it restricts the sitting and lying on private property. Did you know that? Did any of you know that? The reason why is because the private property where it has public access uh, falls under the same mandate of the public forum. When, with, with all due respect to um, Ms. Adams um, and the, the mayor and Rick Eggert, these people who keep referring to the sidewalk as a place of walking, not, uh, not, not staying still, are misled. It's, it's, it's actually a conveyance of community communication. It's protected by the public forum under the First Amendment in the United States. The Venetian Casino case in uh, Nevada uh, clearly stated that the unions had a right to the, to, the, to the sidewalk to protest. Lying down or sitting is a posture. It's, it's a part of free speech. You can't uh, criminalize that. Um, you may be concerned, the business people in Waikiki may be concerned about the visual aspects and the problem with economic hardship that the, the, the people are apparently causing because of obstruction. I work there every day, I've been homeless myself. Uh, the homeless don't obstruct the sidewalk, usually. 
In most cases, they're to the side. They come out also where, after 11 o'clock when the shops have shut. And they're in the rain. And, you know, um, this corporate partnership that goes on where the corporations offer half a million dollars up on a promissory note, that's the only difference between this bill and as it was deferred a few weeks ago, that apparently there's some carrot there, um, is, 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 is a trap. Are they going to pay it in, in the next year, the year after that, the year after that? If they can cough up that money, why aren't they being taxed? Put their money into the... Put, I know they say they've got 20% of the... Of the they provide 20% of the city revenue, I believe. Well, perhaps they should be providing 30, 40, 50, 60%. The Mr. Daly, please summarise and conclude your testimony. All right. The 1% control about 40 or 60%, even more of the wealth. The, the corporation, the two business corporations in Waikiki um, represent the, the Rolexes, the Sheridans, the McDonald's, the Louis Vuitton, the Billabong, the Quicksilver, the Apple, the Hyatt, the Hilton, the Marriott, the Saks of Fifth Avenue are coming. You know, there's our Wall Street right there, that economic engine. Do they care about paying proper wages? I can tell you that the Cheesecake Factory made $21 million profit when I was working there per a year. $21 million, a half a million dollars. They could cough that up straight away. Thank you, Mr. Daly. I got a lot more to say. But there are issues here that are not being addressed. We need the time to be heard. Thank you. Well, the, and I, thank I did you. allow you more than five minutes, not including the questioning period that, that, that we allowed. Thank you, Ike Anderson. Thank you. Yeah. Members, any questions for Mr. Daly? Okay. Is there anyone, that's the end of the registered testifiers list. Is there anyone here who'd like to speak who has not? Thank you so much. I, I sincerely believe that we can solve this problem. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, could you please state your name yes, for the record? Yes, Chun James Thank and Kahuku, you. and we do have homeless problems too, but we're always forgotten. Um, to me, it's a big problem when you have an administration wanting to just service temporarily solution, and when you have the idea that you're not in the housing business. I think that's a basic foundational problem. And when you say temporarily, every year they're going to be coming back asking for millions for temporarily bandaged solution. That is not a sustainable solution. And that's really just throwing good money into a black hole, recurring over and over and over again. Let me just say that I think that every problem can be solved if there's sufficient leadership skill or if there's policy base that is consistent and that makes sense. I want to tell you that in, in rural Haula right now, the mayor is fighting us to put in a $13 million Neiman Marcus firehouse to replace the existing one. And when he does that, he's going to take away the two last remaining commercial lots that a lot of the home homeless people and the rural people in Haula wants so that they could have their farmer's market, so they could sell the little food that they, they make, so that it becomes an, a little economic engine. And yet the mayor is fighting us in court today. And I want to, I want to say that the city council has been most sensible and they have deleted and defunded the project for over four years, and yet the mayor is forcing us and pushing us and bullying us in court, really thanks to the courtesy of taxpayers, because everything that they do and every penny that they waste goes back to the taxpayers. And so I encourage you to continue your leadership. I believe that housing is a problem where you don't have a room and a roof over your head. So brick and mortar is a solution to that. And thank you, city council member, for allocating funds so that you will be able to provide 
some roof and housing to this problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. James. Members, any questions for Ms. James? Please come forward. Aloha again. My hair off to you again, Benny, for stopping this nonsense. I am Lancelot Haile Lincoln. I am a direct descendant of Kamehameha One, And I have my moko how to prove this as a fact. These laws should not be implemented, not override my people's law. The splinter paddle was written by my family. You guys want to write bills, make bills, make laws, make laws against these attorneys. <laughs> yeah? They foreclosed on my family's home, land, 2009. They sell it for $170,791.49. Another one for $35,495.76. Yeah. Just find out this land right here worth one million dollars if you go according to the real estate here in Hawaii. Hmm? Look at this. This is the last one I just received yesterday. Asking for an extension to go to court. No. We're going to make these people homeless? This is what make our people homeless. Our own government. They're stealing our land. They don't even pay us for the land they sell. You guys should write bills to illegalize this stuff. The state of Hawaii and all of these attorneys playing these games and stealing our people's money. Making us homeless. This is ridiculous. Look at this. How many of them? Every single month since 2009, I received this from these people. This is this is not this is not oh no, this is not right. You know, Ikaiko, my head off to you for continuing this hearing the last time I was here. But these stuff should not be happening to our people. We cannot criminalize people for being on the street. These children, they say these housing places is full. Our prisons is full. I've been there, very full. These kids, there's no place for these kids. Only hate, hurt, anger, and pain you get in prison. That's it. These guys from IHS, believe me, I know about these guys. Six of my friends work for these guys in my home, Haleiwa. I help those people a lot of times. They, they got a lot of good program, but they're criminal. One of my friends was supervisor for these people. Six years. Two of my friends in their 80s volunteered their time for that. They called me to go to Iowa, pick up, pick up their stuff and supplies to bring to the park when they got kicked out of the church. They called me and asked me to provide them tents. Easy up tents, I provide for them at the park because they were kicked out of the church. Finally, they moved to Kaneoi. Then, I don't know, all of a sudden, my friend got iced out of that place. Why? Because she was for real. She was for helping the people, not criminal like these people. You heard it once today, you hear it again from me. These people are no good, man. They're taking your money, and they ain't really helping nobody. Housing first, like I said last time, you people got to build low-income housing. No, 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 no 300,000, 500,000 well of homes. I mean... Public, low-income housing, where people can pay $200 a month to go and live. Thank you for your testimony. Members, any questions for Mr. Lee? Thank you. I write bills to criminalize the state and the laws that do this stuff to our people. That's the kind of bills you need to write. Go ahead, Granny. Lunch time already. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. I'm Polly Grace, and I sit on the neighborhood board of Lanukulimaile. But I'm on behalf of myself, better known as Granny, from Lanikohonua to Kaena. Urinating and defecation in public areas is an environmental health hazard. 
not for one, but for all. And that should be stopped. Unless it's a public toilet. If the city willing to put a public toilet, fine, just give me a call. And also, I've been involved with homelessness for 53 years. In the beginning, there were only veterans from outside states who were sent here, one-way ticket and pocket change. Go to Hawaii and, you know, nice place, see the Hawaiian girls and everything, and yes, but they didn't have any place to stay. So my husband just to hire them, and, and finally some got married and raised a family, and others saved enough money and went back home. But now, 2014, now I've been involved with the homeless children for 28 years, of which I'll be doing my cakey Christmas again. That is not only from outside states, it's here because of high rents and not enough jobs. People were sent from the mainland, one-way ticket and pocket change when there's disaster on the mainland because the state couldn't put up with them. So send them to Hawaii. Of course, everybody like come from Hawaii. Hawaii is music to their ears when they talk about Hawaii. So they all come here. So now Hawaii said, we who out of the poi bowl already. So what can we do? What do we do as city council people? What can you do? What can I do? Yeah? We have to have compassion for these people. They are human beings like you and I. It's just that they're disadvantaged because they have no job, they cannot find a home, they have families. So what do you do? What would you do if you were in their place? Put yourself in that situation. I've put myself in that situation many, many times. And like I said, six children, 20 grandchildren, 32 great-grandchildren, and over 100 Hanais. Yes, put yourself in that predicament. What would you do? How can you survive? How can you help them survive? The hands are all out there asking, yeah? So how do we help? How can I help? all of you to solve this problem. I'm in a book, you know where I live. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Granny. Thank you. Members, any questions for Mrs. Grace? If not, come here. Mr. David, I, come forward. I'm sorry. I, uh, the sorry. gentleman in the back raised his hand oh, first. Right. As soon as he's Paul, you both it may come won't on. be long. As soon as he's Paul, <laughs> both come on. Go ahead, David. Good afternoon, uh, Chair and committee members. Um, I just wanted to be here for a little clarification. I didn't want to be redundant. I'm sure you've heard a lot of these comments are made today. You know I support everything, only Bill 42, nothing else. I support most of what they're saying. You may have all seen my letter to the editor about the minimum wage, and you know I'm a compassionate person. However, I do support capital. I'm not a Marxist-Leninist. Um, I think that there's a certain interest we have in trying to provide a support for the business community. That's our job here. Um, I think if you, if I had the time, and I've always tried to push for city council meetings to be at night, because the people who have jobs and have time to show up here are in the tens of thousands who would actually probably have a different opinion than the people sitting in the room right now. And uh, I, th I actually do, and I'm speaking of only Bill 42 if you listen to what I said. I think things need to be done and we're a long way from it. And I think these people do have some really great solutions and they need to be included in the conversation about what's going on outside of Waikiki. But I wish I, uh, Kimberly Pine were here because I wanted people to know that if she didn't understand how people would find out if you could come, if, what's going on here in Honolulu. It's all over the internet. Everyone can find out. If you don't pass this bill for Waikiki, the message that's going to be sent is, oh, there's no, no more chances for this bill in Waikiki. Come one, come all, welcome. They have great free services. And I wonder if the people behind me are going to help pay for the, and the loss of income is true. Small businesses in Waikiki are not doing well. The hotels and airlines are making all the money. They don't have any money left to spend in retail. If you knew anything about what was going on in Waikiki with mom and pop shops in particular, you can see them closing all over the island. It's a big economic turndown. A lot of these people behind me have never been to Waikiki. A few of them live there, but I know a lot of the people on the street, and they're not really going to leave Waikiki. They're there for the money. I don't even know that they fly to the mainland more than me. They probably make more than me from the things that they get. 
So I don't know. I hope this passes. Thank you. For Waikiki only. Thank, Thank you. you. Members, any questions for Mr. Moskowitz? Thank you. Please come forward. This uh, is some of our neighbors from Project 8, the Mapuna Puna area. Hello, my name is Kale Olomano. Hello. I'm Lisa Chandler. And I am a product of uh, Nimitz Bridge. Um, my testimony is in regards of um, the bill. Uh, me and my ancestors and my queen is totally against it and wouldn't, wouldn't um, approve of it because it has to do with human beings. Um, in regards to me being homeless, I've been homeless majority of my life. Um, I'm a survivor, and most of the people down the bridge are survivors too. However, um, affordable housing, um, that's a great plan, but because we've been on the streets so long, um, I think a couple of tents, some shade, um, facilities and water, and an area to eat and cook, basically, I think we'd be happy. And, and rules and regulations. But as a community, Waikiki is different. Everybody's on their own. Down at Nimitz, we all know each other. We're a community. We're a family. Um, and I have another testimony regarding the sweeps. Um, I've witnessed uh, on my with my own eyes, and I have a witness that was with me at the time. It's not her, it was somebody else. But I've witnessed um, city and county employees having two trucks during the sweep. One truck is to put what they feel that had valuables in it, bags, suitcases, and one employee goes through it, takes what they think would be valuable or what they want, and then tosses the bag to the next truck, which dumps it. I have been zero balanced, which means Everything was taken from me that I owned. Even, even a thief would not do this to me or have ever done this to me. But in one hour, the city and county and the sheriff's department has taken everything that I've owned, everything that I've owned from me. I had to start all over again. And this is just my story. There are a number, numerous other people that have the same story but different endings. And this is what the city and county and the sheriff's department has done to me, personally. But if you guys, you guys need advice or you guys need some to help you guys out, you guys should talk, talk to the homeless people. There's people out there that they can come, with, come up with some suggestions for you guys that you guys wouldn't even know because you guys was never homeless. You guys was never homeless, so you guys wouldn't know. But there's people out there that you guys can talk to. They're willing to talk to you guys and help you guys out and come up with a solution because there is a solution. I believe in my heart that there is a solution to this. I wonder why I'm, so hom I'm homeless for so long and why am I stuck here when I'd rather be somewhere else. And only, only my God, only Keokua knows. And I think this is the reason because I would never be here speaking on a microphone to you guys. And I think that's why. I know I had to do something for the homeless. I thought it was going to be cooking, because that's what I love doing. But maybe it's this. My name is Kale Aloha. It is the voice of love. Hello for your testimony. <laughs> Members, any questions? Any questions? Okay. And I came because I think that more people should stand up. And you know, if more people stood up and stood together, less of this would be happening. I came here six months ago with what I thought was more than enough money to get a place and go ahead and get a job. But I, right after I got here, um, found out that everything was so atrocious. And there was no affordable housing. I'm on every housing list. I signed up for everything I could. I will not go into the shelters. Right after I got here, I have bug phobia, by the way, but um, right after I got here, and then I moved into a park and was hit by a sweep, which took everything. I had, they said, five minutes. You have five minutes. We, they woke us up. You have five minutes. Grab what you can carry. Don't even bother trying to get your tent because we were just going to pull the tent stakes and carry the whole thing with us, because I have a boyfriend, we're just going to carry the whole thing with us. And they said, no, you leave the tent, take what you can carry, and go. And that's happened to me twice now. I 
have gotten food stamps and financial and am building to, you know, have put money away. But I was hit again by another sweep. Now have no tent, no nothing. After we rebuilt, because we got our financial and we got a little bit of money ahead. So we got a new tent, we got a tent stove, we got the sleeping bags built back up, but it wasn't two weeks later, they took everything again. And there's just no way to get ahead. I thank you and I didn't come here to cry. Thank you for your testimony. Members, any questions? Thank you. Is there anyone else here with us this afternoon who would like to testify who has not? Ma Aloha, I'm, I'm the program director of the pro of Project DATE in Mapuna Puna, taking care of the chronic homeless. Um, it was not in the last uh, PIC report, but in the latest PIC report, we were able to add the homeless under the Nimitz Highway, which was an additional 250 people. I started uh, joining HMIS, and I am going to be a part of the Housing First VDAT SPDAT um, survey and we fed more than 13,000 people, 13,000 meals within the last year and are doing, uh, as of today, this year, more than 7,000 meals. Our average homeless person is around 54 years old. The average length of stay under the Nimitz Bridge is 10 years and within a, f within a one week period, they came four times in until they took everything they had. And there was repeated um, warnings, outreach, and mentioning of the rehab project because I did get notice of that. I used to receive email notices of the clean sweeps, but that has ceased as of May. Um, so when I give them notice, I give them options. I have sent uh, three people back home to the mainland within the last uh, seven months. I have sent people back into housing on their own accord because we are a low-ranked um, outreach service provider and that makes less than 50000 and I'm the only employee. So it can be done on very minimal and little resources. We Last time I was here, I gave you um, pictures of my facility. We, we are now available with 9,000 square feet to do something about that within the Mapuna Puna area and offer it to you to create a immediate solution. Thank you. Thank you. Members, any questions? Council Member Menor. Some clarification, what's your position on these bills? Um, my clarification on the bills is that I oppose um, a Waikiki special area. I oppose um, increasing the amount of the fine, but what I am for is maybe not to have the police to obstruct and deliver the citation, but to uh, get a group of strong outreach uh, personnel to do what uh, they're afraid what the people are afraid of the police, they would not be of the outreach, and then they can give them that limited solution. Members, any further questions? Council Member Monahan. I just want to say, uh, take, take this opportunity to just say thank you for the services that you do provide out in Mapuna Puna, which are very much needed. Uh, I've been out there um, uh, many times. Uh, we've actually honored them uh, through, through our uh, honorary certificate program members, uh, which you've all signed, and uh, um, you know uh, it's very innovative what the, what they do. They they actually feed people, they uh, provide them haircuts. Um, they're very compassionate. And we it's, have it's a mini a true, service fair every Wednesday yeah. with our food bank. It's a it's a true model of uh, I think of what uh, compassionate servicing is, and uh, I really appreciate what you do for the folks out there. Thanks. Thank you. We do have like people like IHS. Uh, Catholic Charities, Helping Hands, Hepsi Network, Kealo Mamo, at one time Wacky Key Health Center, but no longer. Um, they come out every week. We give them options. We let them know 
but it still happens. I still get phone calls from other districts. Why not? I get phone calls from help from Kaka'ako saying, well, they're not helping me, Sky, but you are the compassionate one that can. And I try to find out <coughs> why it cost him $200 just to get back a cell phone. And then I had a mother call me. She gave her homeless child under the age of 25 an iPhone and an iPad to keep track of him so he can uh, get to stop being a working homeless young male. But that was taken in the sweep, and when he asked for it back, they said they would lock him up. So um, I don't know what's your consideration, but these I got pictures of them. These are big, tall Samoan guys. How they're going to feel um, uh, like intimidated by anybody that's the size of my homeless is beyond me because we're talking big, huge boys. There's no intimidation at all. If anybody's doing an intimidation, it's those that are huger, bigger, and with the power to do what they do. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to testify who has not? Please come forward. Is there anyone else who would like to testify after this gentleman who hasn't? Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Councilman Anderson and the committee. Um, I'd like to uh, applaud all of the outreach efforts that we've heard about today. Um, I, I strongly oppose all of these measures, um, but I'd like to thank you for getting a really important conversation started, um, which I hope will lead to further institutionalization of outreach programs. Um, I would like to share a story of what happened around my neighborhood um, during the recent uh, tropical storm warning that we had. Um, I, I spoke to Jun Yang uh, to ask him, you know, we were under a tropical storm warning, so there were, uh, the, the buses were going to turn into emergency shuttles to take people to evacuation shelters. Um, I was worried about some of the people around my neighborhood. And uh, Mr. Yang was, was kind enough to let me know that there were outreach programs and he was trying to coordinate everyone. Um, but I went around the two days before the storm. Um, I live uh, by Don Quixote, so the neighborhood I was at was near the convention center, just uh, Malka of Waikiki. So if you passed um, Bill 42, it, it's reasonable to assume that some of those people in Waikiki might move over to the convention center, you know, hop over the LOI. Um, none of the people that I had spoken to had any kind of outreach on Kapiolani Boulevard, Kalakaua Boulevard, Kamoku Boulevard. Um, we're talking 48 hours, 24 hours, 12 hours before the storm. You know, nobody had any idea where evacuation shelters were to survive the, the hurricane that was coming. Um, thank God it wasn't so bad. But I think that was a real wake-up call for me that we really need to further um, institutionalize those kinds of efforts. If we can't get it together during a tropical storm warning, um, what makes us think that we have any kind of outreach um, that's adequate right now to actually address what people's everyday needs are? You know, so I think um, there's a number of concerns that you need to get to before you can just um, tell people they can't sleep on the sidewalk. Um, I think you've got to figure out why they're sleeping on the sidewalk first. And uh, I, I thank you for getting all of the right people in the room together to start that conversation. But I hope you, I hope you continue that conversation rather than just pass these bills. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Members, any questions? Thank you very much. Mr. Youngquist. Is there anyone else who would like to testify who has not after Mr. Youngquist? Committee Chair Anderson, members of the Zoning Committee, and visiting council members, uh, Carol Fukunaga and Joey Manahan. Thank you for your presence. First, I'd like to acknowledge the idea that uh, council members Fukunaga and Manahan have been floating around for two years, which is the standalone bathroom. I think that's the immediate thing that you can address at a modest fee. Chinatown um, summit took place the earlier months of Mayor Murphy Honeyman. Now with approximately three mayors and one active mayor, uh, that has not happened. So that's one thing. Another thing about uh, Sand Island. Uh, Sand Island was mentioned last this session as a place for Kanaka Maui, and uh, that bill didn't come through. Sand Island is also the location of the Americans 
of Japanese ancestry uh, internment. And uh, perhaps they should be consulted before whoever is in charge of that state land is asked to cede that land for the city uh, services. So those are the things that I want to say all these bills, because it localizes the special interest of specific council districts, uh, the highest number is mentioned six. If it mentioned all nine, and corresponding police forces are increased, and parks and recreation employee strengths was increased, perhaps you can carry out all these bills, the enforcement of which, and I believe that now you cannot, and it will be irresponsible for this committee and this council to go full speed ahead. And so I urge you to continue to defer this matter. And I, um, I want to thank the council um, vice chair, committee chair, for extending the uh, hearing uh, time allotted. And I, I want to thank uh, Senate-elect uh, Brian Harimoto for permitting us to eat into his committee hearing time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Members, any questions for Mr. Youngquist? Not ma'am, please come forward. Is there anyone else who would like to testify on these measures after this lady who has not spoken? If not, we will close public testimony. Okay. Ma'am, please proceed. Joyce Lee Walther, thank you. Um, I just want to, I'll make it short and sweet. Um, thanks for hanging out this long. Um, one is I do have to blame uh, as far as some of the problems of the homeless uh, on the pharmaceutical industry for creating a lot of drug acts. I can't tell you what percentage. I don't know. Um, the other issue is um, where is the hope of someone who has been uh, cited uh, up to a possible fine of $1,000 many times uh, getting back on their feet? Will their wages be garnished? And um, my question to, that I see in each of these bills is it says subject to exemptions. And I'd like you to elaborate on that, please. Thank you. Thank you. Members, are there any questions? Not, thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to testify who has not? Please come forward. Thank you, Chair Anderson, Council Members. Good afternoon. I'm Paulette Dibibar. Um, I'm from the Wainai Coast District. The bills are okay for sanitary reasons. And the thing is, um, I hear a lot of testimonies about um, the bullying and things like that. I know for a fact, many times, the police department, the sheriff department do use excessive force. I've witnessed it with my own eyes many a times. Yes, I have family members in the HPD department, in the sheriff department. I've grew up with relatives in that department. But it was not like as it is today. What gives them the right to bu bully the public? They're supposed to be containing themselves, not because the public goes off on, their, on them. They have a right to bullying the public. They're supposed to keep their composure. Same with our politicians. What makes you above the public? We are your constituents. What are you doing to help your, your constituents? That's the bottom line. What part of Sand Island are you folks going to build this first housing? Sand Island is a big place. It's a big park area. There's an old Coast Guard building area that's fenced in. Fix up those buildings. Put your, you can remodel those buildings. Why spend excess money, extra money, to revamp the things? Each of you, as our politicians, don't send somebody out there to go do, 
to check out the, and do the studies. Why don't you, as our politicians, go and look at the place yourself. Take time out from your schedules to serve your community, to serve your constituents. That's where all politicians are lacking, in my opinion. Don't just talk the talk. Walk the walk you talk. And that's what upsets a lot of the public, your constituents. And it's very upsetting. It's the field that goes round and around and around. The circle has no beginning, no end. And that's what the public is sick and tired of hearing. That this thing keeps going around and around and around. This has been going on for many of years. I remember I was six years old when I heard about homelessness. Dang, I'm in my 60s. And it's still the SOS. Still the same thing and it's gotten worse. So you guys have to go clean up the mess that was from yesteryear. And I'm sorry for you people because where are the old timers now that did nothing about it? They're dead and buried. So you guys are stuck holding the bag. And I feel sorry for you folks because there are many old timers that knows what it was and you guys got to fix it. I thank you folks for your time and for listening to me. Mahalo for your testimony. Members, any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, members, uh, that closes the public testimony portion of today's committee hearing. Council Member Fukunaga. Thank you for uh, giving everyone a chance to, you know, fully uh, discuss the various measures. I just wanted to bring to your and your members' attention the uh, hand-carried uh, proposed CD1 draft that we uh, submitted. It basically um, modifies the boundaries for the downtown Chinatown areas. And um, for some reason, this is probably the first time I've had a chance to see some really clear um, maps, you know, with the areas in question. So um, I don't believe the uh, drafting agency had a chance to change the listing of streets in the bill, but we will certainly um, make whatever corrections are still needed to address that portion. These were based on recommendations that we received from businesses and residents in the downtown Chinatown area. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Fukunaga. Members, any other? Comments before I make my recommendations. Councilmember Menor. Yes, Chair. You know, a lot of uh, negative uh, representations and allegations have been made with respect to the uh, <laughs> IHS. But in the interest of time, I'm, I'm not going to ask them to come forward uh, to, to offer testimony and rebuttal, or to offer comments uh, in response, but rather, uh, I'd rather, I'd really appreciate it uh, if um, the representatives of the IH uh, in the near future could submit a letter or, or uh, do a submittal in writing specifically responding to some of the concerns that have been expressed. More specifically, uh, you know, complaints or concerns have been expressed about the, uh, the habitability of your facilities. Uh, there's been a question about uh, the way you handle the finances and various accounts that were being mentioned. So, um, again, in the interest of time, I, I know if you came forward to testify that um, that would um, extend this hearing um, by a, a considerable length of time. But uh, we, we would like to get your responses, written responses, to the... Um, representations and statements that have been made in the near future. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Member Menor. Uh, IHS did have the opportunity to come forward earlier to answer questions. They also had the opportunity to share their thoughts on some of the previous uh, remarks that were made in prior hearings uh, about the services that they provide as well as their policies. Uh, I also contacted the IHS Executive Director, uh, Connie Mitchell, and asked to talk story with her. She was more than happy to meet with me, answer my questions. And if any members do have questions for IHS or of US Vets uh, or any of, of the other uh, providers or of any members of the city administration, Director Sasamura, the Honolulu Police Department, the managing director, Ember Shin, Mayor Caldwell, ever since these bills were held, uh, I did reach out to all of these folks and others seeking their mana'o, seeking to hear from them 
uh, their concerns as well as to how they plan to move forward. And I did have the opportunity to talk with all of them. So between now and when these bills come up in full council in September, if any members have any questions or if they'd like to meet with any of these folks, I strongly suggest uh, that you reach out to them. And due to my own, from my own experiences, uh, they, I found them to be more than accommodating. I have. Uh, Council Member Kobayashi. Uh, we're still in discussion. Are we? we are. I'll make my recommendation shortly, okay. but I'd like to open well, the floor I, for any I, remarks. I would like to see some sort of built-in mechanism in Bill 48 where some of the boundaries could be changed without having to come back to Council. Um, because as, as these, um, should this pass, because some of the boundaries may have to be changed. Okay. And if there was a built-in way to do it, that would be great. Uh, we do have proposed committee draft ones, uh, both from Council Member Fukunaga and from Council Member Manor. Uh, Council Member Fukunaga's committee draft for Bill 48 extends the prohibition against sitting or lying down to public malls as defined in ROH 29 1.1. There are also miscellaneous technical and non-substantive amendments. Council Member Manor also has a proposed committee draft one to Bill 48 that includes geography boundary restrictions and attaches maps of six zones or areas where the prohibition would apply. Right. So I, I'm just saying that should this pass, I, I wish there could be some sort of built-in mechanism so that if the boundaries had to be changed, um, we wouldn't have to the come department back to this all does, right, right, right. Okay. The departments don't have to come back to council just to move it one block or whatever. Uh, Council Member Kobayashi, did you want to call forward the administration at this time to no. discuss this? Or if Bill 48 moves forward today, mm -hmm. it is one month behind the other measures. Right. It would be coming up for second reading before the council mm -hmm. in September, and then would have to come back before this committee one more time before going for third reading in October. Right. So we've been trying to find a way that we could put in some built-in, and we'll be working with the author of the bill. Okay. So you'd be, f you'd be comfortable uh, working with the author of the bill as well as the administration going forward? Right. Okay. Thank you, Council Member Kobayashi. Um, Vice Chair Harimoto. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just in general, let me say that, uh, oh, let me first start by addressing IHS also. Um, yes, we did hear a lot today and in past hearings, but um, I think many of us really appreciate all the good work that IHS does. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is that it's not a one-size-fits-all. So I know that IHS has helped many, many, many people, and they do good work. But it's not for everyone. So I think we're hearing some of the other side um, can't satisfy everyone. So I just wanted to start by saying that. So thank you, uh, Connie. Uh, but beyond that, if this committee and council is going to move something forward, I really would like it to, to be Bill 42. Just addressing the various iterations of, of the Sitlai Bill, I really understand the reason why the mayor proposed starting with Waikiki, and I fully concur with that. Um, so I hope that we can have that full discussion in a while. But let me, let me just say, I'm gonna pull out my, my notes from the past three meetings, or maybe four meetings, I lost track, about why I'm not supporting any of these sit line bills. I just cannot support these bills. But again, if we are to move something forward, I hope that it will be just Bill 42 with some future implementation date. Um, but we'll see. But anyway, I'm gonna go through some of my statements that I made many times before, and um, I feel that we're getting close to the end, and I really need to say these again. So pardon me, I know you've heard it all before, but um, this is important. So my notes are getting kind of worn here, but. Uh, so let me say again, I think we all understand there is a problem. I don't think any one of us sitting here is going to say there is no problem. There is a problem. But I think we disagree on what the solutions are. Um, 
And again, you know, this problem didn't develop overnight. I think we heard the managing director admit that. You know, we all understand these problems have been around for decades. The homeless situation has been allowed to go unaddressed for decades. And it's gotten to what some people call a crisis. And be that as it may, now we're faced with some actions. But because, in my opinion, perhaps government has failed over the past many, many decades to address this, why is it that we're looking for an overnight solution? I, I just don't understand that. It's a very complex situation, very difficult. There is no simple solution, but yet we're pr proceeding and proposing um, like it's an overnight solution, and it's not. Making a law like this is not going to solve the situation. It is not. I think sometimes as elected officials, we, we look for these quick fix kind of things to do to say, yes, we've, we've done our part. Um, but I truly believe this is going to make the situation worse. It, this will exacerbate the situation. We've heard from HPD that their intent is not to arrest people. And I, I give them that. You know, their intent is not to, but the reality is that's what the law says. They will cite people sitting and lying on the sidewalks, of course, after they've been warned. They've been asked to move away, but where else are they going? There's no question in my mind that eventually they will be cited. They'll go to court. They have no money to pay the $1,000 fine. They're going to end up in jail. How does having a criminal record now help them? I just don't understand this. I really don't. We, we've all talked about housing first. I think there's total agreement that housing first is the answer. We've heard it from the managing director. We've heard it from almost everyone. I don't think I've ever heard someone who say that's not the answer. <coughs> So if we have agreement housing first is the answer, we have agreement that there's a problem, we have agreement that we need to do something, I just don't see the pieces adding up that now we're trying to make a law to say you can't sit in line on the sidewalk. If we're going to do that, as I've said many times, let's do it after we have housing first in place. I, I just don't understand why we're doing the law to make it a criminal offense before we have the solution that we all agree on. It's just beyond me. We have this, the Interagency Council on Homelessness. Finally, after all these years, finally we have the state, the city, all the providers working together. And they're all working on housing first. They're working on the, the great services to wrap around housing first. But we're not there yet. And here we are talking about passing this law to make it a crime to sit and lie on the sidewalk when there are no alternatives. For people who are willing to, to go into existing shelters, that's great. But to say that there's existing space in existing shelters, therefore, that's the answer. No, we, we know for a fact there's many homeless people for various reasons who cannot or refuse to go into existing shelters. So, you know, to me that's a red herring to say there is space. We just need the patience and the willpower to get housing first in place before we make this law. And as we've always said over and over, the lack of affordable housing is really part of the problem. Let's not only talk about stopping existing homeless from living on the streets, but let's stop the flow of homeless. Stop the flow of people to become homeless. I think that's the greater issue that we need to address. If we don't address that, people will still fall into homeless and it's, it, it'll just be a, a problem that'll go on. So I, I just don't know. We talk about the affordable housing situation as was mentioned. You know, there's true affordable housing and what I call fake affordable housing. And we need to really address the truly affordable housing which really is the low-income rentals. We need to address that all together with what we're trying to do. 
we cannot address this only by making this simple law. Uh, it's not going to work. And you know, I'm not going to be here in a few months, but as long as I'm here, I really would like us to focus on true solutions and not a Band-Aid solution. Um, I'm happy to hear the Waikiki businesses um, commit to, to funding and supporting. That's great. I really applaud them for doing that. But that, again, is not going to solve the problem. And, and, you know, finally, I just get the sense that because of whatever is happening, we somehow lost the feeling that these are real people. You know, these are real people that we're talking about. And it's just too easy to say, we'll just pass this law and, you know, it's out of sight, out of mind. These are real people. We've heard from some of them. I've, I've been out to, to visit them. I've seen a lot. These are real folks who are suffering. They're not homeless by choice. Yes, and perhaps they need, they need a little nudge. They need some support. They need some help. True, all true. But if we just pass this law just by itself, without having housing first, without having the wraparound services, nothing will change. And, and this whole notion of, of this tent city or interim solution, whatever you call it, that's just a pressure release. You know, again, we've done something, the pressure's off, and how long is this going on? Where's the pressure now to really come up with the, the firm, permanent solutions of housing first and affordable housing? I just feel that's, that's a wrong direction for us to take. So I don't know, you know, I personally, I think we all have our own reasons to vote whichever way we do. But for me, you know, my faith guides me. My faith tells me this is wrong. My moral compass tells me this is wrong. And I cannot support this. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Any further remarks before the chair makes recommendations? Thank you very much, members, and for all of those who took the time to be here with us from this morning into this afternoon. The chair will be recommending that all of these bills pass out of committee today in some shape or form, and I will go through each one individually. Some of these bills were held, since these bills were held in committee last month, I've had the opportunity to work with Mayor Caldwell towards short-term housing and towards a short-term housing first initiative. I'm pleased to hear that the mayor's administration is committed to this. I ask my colleagues to, to join me in embracing and supporting the mayor's initiative and to embrace the mayor implementing a Housing First initiative with the more than $47 million that this council appropriated for that endeavor. Yes, some say that these bills are cruel. I'm aware of that. But I believe, members, it's much more compassionate and preferable to removing folks from our sidewalks and instead provide them with a meal, a bed, and a roof over their heads versus leaving them on the street, unsheltered, subject to violence and other horrors. Members, no one, and let me stress, no one has the right to permanently occupy public space to the detriment of the general public. I don't care who you are, where you're from. None of us here None of us members sitting here have the right to permanently occupy public space to the detriment of the general public, nor does anyone else. Additionally, members, no one has the right to pollute our public spaces with their bodily fluids or bodily solids either. And if we members do not do something to address this problem, we are derelict in our duties. I humbly ask, members, that you please join me and moving these bills out of committee today and eventually to the desk of Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell for his action. I look forward to continuing to work with all of you and with Mayor Caldwell and his administration. Members to specifically get into each bill. The first bill, Bill 42, prohibiting subject to exceptions, persons from sitting or lying on public sidewalks in the Waikiki Special District. The chair recommends that Bill 42 be reported out for passage on third reading. Any discussion? Are, you, are we doing it 
I'm going to go uh, bill by bill, Council Member Kobayashi, and members are free to offer uh, their discussion as we go bill by bill, or if you would like to go ahead and do so at one time, it's, well, it's your preference, Council Member. I'd just like to say that it, having IHS there makes it a little easier. Supporting the, the IHS has been um, really in the forefront of helping people, and I really want to thank, thank them. I'm very grateful for all the sacrifices they have made. Um, you know, we've tried doing housing first. Um, I believe um, when another council member, the previous council member from Pearl City was here, um, we, we were still trying to work on housing first. There was that site in Chinatown, but all of the, the uh, people from Chinatown, all the organizations opposed having housing first there, because it's next to a temple, next to a school. And um, so we, they rather have a senior center there. So we tried doing housing first across the street and we're not able to do that. There was another temple there. We tried to do one in, on P.E. Koi and had a very difficult time citing a place for housing first. Citing, finding places where we could put truly affordable housing. That's a difficulty. We're on an island, there isn't much land. We don't want to put people way off in, in uh, like Barbara's Point as someone suggested. We want to have the housing where it's close to jobs. So the difficulty is finding the, a site where we can have good affordable housing, good housing first. So I do support your recommendation and um, thank you to IHS for being there. Thank you, Council Member Kobayashi. Vice Chair Harimoto, further remarks? Just very briefly. So if I understood your recommendation uh, or your intent, you're intending to move all of these bills forward is that correct? That is correct, Vice Chair. Okay, so let me address that. Please do. You know, I've already had my say about why I oppose all these, but let me just say further that if we are going to do something, let's take a stand right here. Which of these options do we move forward? I, I don't understand why we would move all the different versions forward. Uh, you know, we're just going to have this whole discussion all over again. So let's take a stand choose which one we're going to move forward, and we'll deal with it. I, I just don't understand moving all of them forward. Council Member Menor, did you have any remarks you'd like to offer? Yes, uh, just briefly, I, I will support your recommendation. I, I think that uh, through the process of being able to vote on each bill, that uh, whatever concerns we may have with respect to each bill, and which ultimately should be approved in final vote or action by the Council, will be uh, further discuss as we go bill by bill. But I just wanted to state uh, in general that um, I'm uh, supporting your recommendation. Um, I think it's clear that um, the issue of homelessness is a, a very difficult one and we're having to make a, a very difficult decision in trying to address a difficult and complex problem. I think that when you view um, these bills in conjunction with the city's efforts to implement housing first and to significantly increase the supply of uh, shelter spaces for the homeless, that um, what we're trying to do is to strike a very uh, difficult uh, balance, uh, to adopt a, a, a balanced approach. On the one hand, I, I think that uh, each and every council member is uh, very sensitive to the needs uh, of our homeless and the lack of adequate shelter spaces for our homeless individuals and in particular for our homeless uh, families. Um, However, as has been already uh, indicated and discussed on numerous occasions, uh, the city is moving forward uh, in a uh, bold uh, manner uh, to allocate millions of dollars to Housing First, which ultimately will substantially increase the amount of shelter space that would be available to our homeless. On the other hand, um, I think that as council members, we also need to be mindful of the concerns of the vast majority of constituents whom we represent. While I whole, fully agree with uh, Councilmember Harimoto's uh, position and concern that government has a responsibility, we have a responsibility to provide more affordable shelter space for our homeless. Notwithstanding that concern, uh, we also need to be mindful of and to address uh, the public's right to have unimpeded and unobstructed access to our public sidewalks. Um, I think that I echo the concerns of uh, many of our constituents when I say that uh, while we need to provide more shelter space, uh, allowing individuals to use public sidewalks, public areas to inhabit 
and to treat them as living areas uh, is not an acceptable option. Uh, it doesn't benefit the homeless. It doesn't benefit the general public. And uh, so I think that uh, what we're trying to do is to address those concerns. And finally, I think that um, compelling testimony has already been offered by not only the representatives of the visitor industry, but also uh, residents who actually live in Waikiki that, um, that they do have concerns that need to be addressed uh, through legislation. So we're having to make this very difficult balancing uh, decision, but we are trying to adopt a fair and balanced approach, and I think that uh, the city council, working in conjunction with the administration, is uh, clearly moving in that direction. So uh, having made those comments, I will support your recommendation. Thank you, Council Member Menor. Members, any further discussion? If not, any objections? Noting the obje objection of Council Member Harimoto. Uh, Bill 42 has moved out of committee and will go to the full council. Members, the next item on our agenda is Bill 43, prohibiting urinating and defecating in public within the Waikiki Special District. Members, we do have a hand-carried committee draft one from the administration that replaces in section 40-3 exceptions the word section with the word article. The, and the administration states that the reason for this committee draft one is so that the exceptions apply to the entire article. Uh, with that, members, the chair will recommend that Bill 43 be amended to a CD1 offered by the administration that I just outlined. Any discussion on amending Bill 43 to CD1? If not, any objections or reservations? Hearing none, Bill 43 has been amended to a CD1. The chair further recommends that Bill 43 CD1 be reported out for passage on third reading. Any discussion, objections? Council Member Harimoto? I just want to state for the record that I, I, I will go along with this mm -hmm. because we heard the managing director state today that the Waikiki restroom next to the police substation will be open 24-7. And with that understanding, I will support that. Thank you, Vice Chair Harimoto. Members, any further discussion? If not, any objections or reservations? Hearing none, Bill 43, CD1, has been reported out for passage on third reading. The next bill before us is Bill 45, prohibiting persons from sitting or lying on public sidewalks subject to exceptions. Members, I am offering a committee draft one that makes the following amendments. New language as it appears at page 2, section 29.1, to prohibit sitting or lying on public sidewalks instead of for 24 hours to the hours of 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. New language appears at page 3, section 29.1b9, to provide an exception from the pro prohibition in Bill 45, designated geographic area regulated by separate ordinance enactment. There are also miscellaneous and technical non-substantive amendments. We're also, the chair also recommends incorporating the committee draft one offered by Council Member Fukunaga that extends the prohibition against sitting or lying on, on sidewalks to public malls as defined in ROH section 29.1.1 and other miscellaneous and technical non-substantive amendments offered by Council Member Fukunaga. Members, any discussion on amending to the CD1 as outlined? Council Member Menor. Okay, I, I will support your uh, recommendation, but of course, as you know, I have uh, very strong uh, reservations. Um, the, uh, as I've stated uh, previously, my major concern is the fact that, uh, as presently worded, even with the proposed CD1, uh, Bill 45 is uh, overly broad and is unconstitutional. The Corporation Council has already indicated that the, uh, the bill uh, does have uh, legal problems. Um, I would also note that, um, and it's, it's unfortunate uh, the Councilman Fukunov could not be here, but in regards to including an amendment with respect to uh, public malls, we've already received um, an opinion from the Corporation Council indicating that um, that sort of an amendment uh, wouldn't fit the title because of the fact that public, this bill relates to side, public sidewalks, 
And uh, the definition of public sidewalks doesn't include public malls. So by included, including that particular uh, amendment to have this cover public uh, malls as well as public sidewalks, that would uh, further um, raise even larger concerns for me in regards to the uh, constitutionality uh, of uh, this bill. Um, I, I would also uh, express the concern that um, given the fact that this bill would apply to every sidewalk throughout the island that um, it could uh, raise or pose uh, enforcement problems. I'm also concerned about the uh, unintended, unintended consequence that may result from this bill uh, with respect to um, residents who live in neighborhoods who may be in technical violation of this law if they happen to be sitting on a, a neighborhood sidewalk uh, down the road. So I do have major concerns, nevertheless, to, to accommodate the chair's recommendations and because of my recognition that we're not taking a final vote today. Um, we're not taking final action on this measure today. Uh, I will support your recommendation to move this bill, bill out with reservations to keep it alive for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Menor. Council Member Menor, in light of your concerns with extending the bill to Council Member Fukunaga's uh, hand carried CD1, and your concern that because the bill re relates to public sidewalks and not to public malls as well. Uh, the chair is willing to not amend to that portion, that, that suggested CD1. And we can work with Council Member Fukunaga as well as with the Office of Council Services to see if there's anything we can do going forward to include that language. But uh, willing to make that suggestion. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, members, so the chair recommends that Bill 45 be amended to a CD1 without the amendment that would extend the prohibition against sitting or lying to public malls as defined in ROH section 29-1.1. So we will not be adding the public malls language to the proposed CD1. Okay. Members, any, any further discussion? Okay. Just very briefly, members, I offered this measure extending the prohibition island-wide for the fact that We've had an outcry from citizens across the Oahu who live outside of Waikiki, who have expressed to the council the concern that those of us who live outside Waikiki, aren't we important as well? Are we not taxpayers of the city and county of Honolulu, just as residents of Waikiki are? And we have concerns from other council members who are elected from areas outside of Waikiki, whose constituents have expressed to them, me included, that they'd like to ensure that their neighborhoods are protected it's for those reasons that I offered Bill 45, and it's for that reason that I'm asking that we pass Bill 45 out of committee today, and eventually when it gets to the council next month, for, next month for third reading, that we send it to the mayor's desk and let him make the final decision as to whether he will sign it into law, whether he will allow it to become law without his signature, or whether he will ultimately veto it. That said, members, uh, any Objections or reservations to amending to the CD1? Reservation, reservation from Council Member Menor. Okay, the bill has been amended to a CD1. The chair further recommends that Bill 45 CD1 be reported out for passage on third reading. Any discussion? Any objections? Any reservations? Okay, noting the objections of Council Member Harimoto and the reservations of Council Member Menor. Bill 45, CD1, has been reported out for passage on third reading. The next item on our agenda, members, is Bill 46, prohibiting urination and defecation in public places. Members, the chair has offered a proposed posted CD1. For your information, the changes are listed on the agenda and also in your binders. The CD1 that I offer makes the following amendments. New language appears on, at page 2, section 40-3.3 to provide an exception where urination and defecation in any designated geographic area is prohibited by a separate ordinance enactment. The language also deletes the word already from the phrase already prohibited by state law to expand the exception to include not only state laws in existence, but also future state laws. There are also miscellaneous technical and non-substantive amendments. The 
the chair is also recommending that Bill 46 be amended to include the same changes mentioned earlier for Bill 43 that replace in Section 40-3 exceptions the word section with the word article. So members, the chair is recommending that Bill 46 be amended to the proposed CD1 as just outlined. Any discussion on amending Bill 46 to the CD1? Seeing no discussion, any objections? Any reservations to amending? Seeing none, Bill 46 has been amended to the CD1. The chair further recommends that Bill 46 CD1 be reported out for passage on third reading. Any discussion? Any objections? Any reservations? Noting the objection of Vice Chair Harimoto, Bill 46, CD1 has been reported out for passage on third reading. Okay, the final item before us this afternoon, members, is Bill 48, prohibiting, subject to exceptions, persons from sitting or lying on public sidewalks in areas zoned for commercial and business activities. Members, we have two proposed posted CD1 versions. For your information, those changes are also listed on the agenda. Councilmember Menor, as the author of Bill 48, one of the posted proposed CD1 versions is one from your office. Did you want to make comments on yours or possibly both? Yeah, no, I've, I've already um, made extensive comments already in regards to how we came up with this draft, so I'm not going to belabor the point. But um, I respect Councilmember Fukunaga's uh, efforts to try to uh, further refine or amend the proposed CD1 that I had offered, and um, I would be uh, supportive of her proposed CD1. Uh, however, with the understanding that um, as this bill moves forward for further discussion, that um, I'd like to get the um, continued input of the Corporation Council, which had worked with me very closely putting together the uh, Bill 48. But in addition to that, um, I think that you know, uh, the Councilmember Fukunaga's proposed CD1 also includes that uh, provision that would make this constitutionally defective, which is that I think, let's see, I, I believe that she also has, uh, includes, she includes public walls. Yes. So we need to delete that to ensure that this doesn't uh, run afoul of the uh, city charter. So you're asking uh, Council Member Menor that Council Member Fukunaga's CD1 not be included in the amendments? Well, I would support her proposed CD1, CD1 but without the reference to public walls, the deletion of the reference to public walls. <coughs> Councilmember Menor, did you have any questions that you'd like to ask of our committee attorney? Yes, would you like to clarify? I'm, I'm Mr. Senda, would you the, please? Uh, I'm, I'm responding to the proposed go to the uh, microphone. one that was hand carried by Councilmember Fukunaga. Councilmember Menor, please proceed with your questioning. Good afternoon, Chair and members. Warren in the Office of Council Services. Okay, so you, uh, the uh, Corporation Council had expressed a concern that uh, if we uh, have this apply to public malls that uh, it would uh, fall beyond the scope of the title of the bill which uh, relates to public sidewalks so unless I'm misreading the bill I, th I think that the the proposed CD1 uh, offered by Councilman Fukunaga is presently worded would uh, encompass public malls as well as side public sidewalks is that correct that is correct um, and let me further explain that and to avoid confusion there were there are two CD1s that were offered by Councilmember Fukunaga. One is the posted version, which extended um, the prohibition to public malls. And one is the hand-carried version, which you are now looking at, which uh, changed some of the uh, affected areas, notably the Chinatown area. Oh, that's correct. That's and, correct. And the I downtown see. area. But both CD1 versions, um, proposed by Councilmember Fukunaga apply to public malls right. as well as sidewalks. So what I'm recommending is that we uh, uh, move forward. Uh, Councilmember Fukunaga has proposed hand-carried CD1 that's before us that um, redefines the boundaries of the Chinatown area and the downtown district, that we move forward with that proposed CD1 but delete any reference uh, to, uh, to public malls. So this would not apply to public malls. So, we're, so basically, what I'm what I'm recommending would re apply to her proposed hand-carried CD1, correct? Correct. Okay, that's before us. 
Okay, Councilmember Menor, with That's all it. of your questions answered. Yes. Okay. So the chair's recommendation is to amend Bill 48 to the proposed posted CD1 offered by. No, it's the hand carried. Or the, excuse me, the hand carried CD1, as just outlined uh, by Councilmember Menor. That's right. But but delete the, any reference to public malls. Public malls, correct. So this will only apply to public sidewalks. Sidewalks, okay. right. Members, any discussion on amending to a CD1 as just discussed by Council Member Menor? If not, any objections, reservations? Hearing none, the bill has been amended to a CD1. The chair finally recommends that Bill 48, CD1, be reported out for second reading and scheduling of a public hearing. I'd also, uh, as a reminder, members note that Bill 48 is one month behind of the other bills that already have moved out of committee. And if this bill does pass council on second reading public hearing, it will return to this committee one final time. Okay, members, any discussion on my recommendation to move this out? Any objections? Any reservations? Noting the objection of council member Harimoto, Bill 48, CD1, has been reported out for second reading and scheduling of a public hearing. We've come to the end of our agenda going into this afternoon, members. Thank you very much for your patience. Council Member Harimoto, thank you very much for allowing us to eat into the time of the Committee on Transportation. Council Member Harimoto, do you have any announcements? Well, for those who are here for the 1 o'clock uh, transportation meeting or the 2.30 Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, hang on, let me check if we have quorum and if all the presenters are still here, and we'll, we'll regroup. Thank you. Thank you very much to the service providers. Thank you very much to the Caldwell administration. And thank you very much to the community members and stakeholders who stayed with us and offered your mana'o this afternoon. We are adjourned.